The outlets do not have to be flipped. They can be one way or another way. So you could edit the block that's in there and you could set another base point. So let me show you this. If I wanted to go to block edit, I don't have to select on a block. I can just say B E D I T B E is block edit. I can select the outlet, not the dynamic one, but the original one. Now, another thing that I have down here on my dynamic prompts in parameters, there's a base point and I could select that to be one of these endpoints instead. And then when I finish this and I close block editor and save it, notice how these have all changed. I would have to flip these around because I edited a block that was already internal. So I'm going to hit F8. I clicked on the grip. Space, space. Uh oh, I had both of them selected, so you got to watch out for that. So you could block edit this before you ever put these in. Then you won't have this issue. But that's what you can have it either way, but you want one way or the other way, guys. So what I'm going to do is undo a little bit. I don't want that. And I'm just going to leave them just like they are. Good question on that one. Let's go to our plumbing layer. Our gray water. I should have made it gray. Let's bring in the laboratory. It's not showing ellipses in here for some reason. Notice that it's dragging from the insertion point. I'm going to insert it right into that corner. And now I can see that maybe I'd want to move these luminaires or these lights a little bit. And I love having that nearest running. So that one looks okay. Let's go ahead and bring everything else in. I'm going to bring in the tub. And if you have not brought in a toilet, you can go over here to this other block and bring in your toilet imperial. Now where I'm going to put that is I'm going to put it right here right underneath the window because everybody likes to look out the window when they use the bathroom right just kidding so i'm going to change it now to elongated plan and now i need to move it because this block was not created two inches off the wall from any point in space because that's its original position notice i can move this around so hit f8 and move it two inches down so you can use that block or you can use the one if you wanted to create one. Okay. Um, and do you see how we don't have a lot of space here? If we have our shower head on this side, I could step right in here and I don't have any problem. So remember that I, I put the, and it's up to you because the input really doesn't show it that way, but I put the small fillets up uh, to the high side or to the, uh, the very northern side, if you will, of that. We don't have any more plumbing um, fixtures. So now we're going to go to our electric layer, and I'm going to auto-hide this again so it gets out of my way. I'm going to set my wiring layer active. So now I'm going to put in all my wire and we're going to learn about splines. So spline is not a polyline. Um, it is a, it's, and it doesn't even show it up here, but if you hit the down key, here's our spline right here. Now we use a fit spline or interpolated spline. It's defined by points and not vectors of lines that are vectors of lines that are tangent. So you'd have to know where those points are. So I'm just going to use a spline here and I want to show you how this works. So let's go over here to our ceiling fan. So I'm going to start at the end of the switch and I'm going to take off ortho because wire is never straight. 
every point I click, I'm going to give a bunch of little points here, and I'm going to let that be perpendicular. Now, do you see how it wants to continue? I can right-click right here, and I can say that I want an end tangency to something. And I might want it tangent to something. So we'll do that in just a second. I'm just going to hit Enter to finish that. Now notice how these lines have such a tiny scale to them. So I may want to change my line type scale to that. Now maybe I want this to be tangent to this line. If you click on the endpoint, it gives you a drop down. And it only allows me to control fit. It's allowing me to change the way that this is made. And I'm wondering if, let me see if I delete this. I'm going to create a spline again. So SP, L is spline. And let's start from here, somewhere nearest. And I want to show you, you want to click a bunch of times because you're going to have the option. Now I started from that circle and I came down to this one. And I'm going to right click now and I'm going to have an end tangency. And it says specify the end tangent to this. I'm going to go down to this line and it makes that smooth out to that to that vertical line. I don't, I didn't have anything to do that with over here on the circle. But if I click on this spline, notice every place that I clicked, I can drag this and this will always remain tangent. You see that? So it's really nice to have multiple clicks while you're doing this because then you'll have more options. The floor plans get really super, super, super concentrated so you'll have to move those around a lot and let's create another spline i'm going to select from the same point maybe they all connect together and then i'm going to click 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 and click on the end of this one right click at the end and say end tangency and then just as if you're drawing a line from your last point to this it's going to make a vertical line tangent. So if I want to move this around, I can bring this down a little bit. And you see how it all remains tangent no matter what. Now, usually I put my light switches closest to the door if they go to the outside. Um, and you see that we have a wire going through the door over here. And that's not really the case. That's not the way it's going to be wired. This is just a diagram. If I tried just to come through the wall, we wouldn't be able to see that line very well. So I'm going to hit enter to repeat the last command. And I'm going to start somewhere over here, maybe from the end of my light, F8, turning that off. Now I'm going to turn around that corner, right click because I want to end the line and I'm going to end in a tangency down to this point. Now it started in a tangency here, I think. Let's see. Nope, it didn't start in a tangency on that one. Yeah, right there. Do you see you can right click on a grip and you can say tangent direction? And then I can say tangent to a line that would go through there. So no matter where I move this point, that's still going to be tangent no matter what. So I can select in tangency and then I can go to the start and right click on that and say tangent direction. So if I hit escape, I click on it and I right click or I just hover over that grip. I just hover, I didn't even right click. Go to tangent direction. I can remove any of these points and I can add a point. If I hover over something, I can add another point on here.
and then that can give me more control over it. And maybe I don't like this little loop right here. You can just drag that. Okay. So now we got those lines put in. Let's put in our wire here. Now, I do not want you to draw a wire through one light to another. Draw a spline from one line to the other and make it a little bit curved so that people can see that it's wire. Now, I'm going to right click right now and go in tangency and draw that line all the way across so that's moved out. And if I can click on this over that point, I can say tangent direction and I can click over there. Editing any of this, th this stuff is not a command. So if I hit enter to repeat the last command, it's going to create another spline. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to start right here. Right click in tangency and I'm going to come over here to this in quadrant or endpoint. If I click on this one, tangent direction, straight line. So that's kind of a little bit particular of me, but that's, that's kind of looks better than anything else and coming in at an angle. We got one more to go through, so I'm going to hit enter. Right click in tangency, select the other line, click on this now. You see how that, that looks? I just think a wire is going to come out tangent, but it's up to you guys. Tangent direction to down here. So when you get into your architectural classes, they may be more particular than I'm going to be, but that's kind of the way that I would do it. So do we have all of our lines? We have to have wires from every switch to every outlet. Don't forget your GFCI. Now, I don't really want to change the line type scale of this, but do you remember that this was really small here and in paper space, it was okay? So what I'm going to do is save this real quick, and I'm going to go to Layout tab. Now I, do, I don't see my breaks in this, so I'm going to have to change those. I see breaks in this, but I don't see them in this. So I'm going to go back to Model Space, and I'm going to select, select these, and I'm going to make the, the line type scale much larger. So I'm going to right click on all my wires. So I'm going to gather all my wires, right click properties. And let's make this like 10. Let's see if this makes it any bigger. Now I can see I at least need to see a break in every line. So let's see. I've got breaks in that one. So 10 for the line type scale worked out even on this little one. You may have to change just one to be more. So it doesn't mean that everything has to be the same line type scale. You just want to try and make it as uniform as possible. And it looks like that is what we need to do for our blocks. And we're finished with our drawing. This At this point, you need to check all your dimensions. Make sure that this 5 foot 4 and this 7 foot 4 are to the correct side of your walls. Otherwise, that's five points off. That's a big deal because you've just foreshortened the width or the length of a room. So if it is to the wrong side, you might need to go and use that stretch command. Move your dimensions to the correct side and you'll see if it is correct or not. The seven foot four goes to the bathroom. The five foot four goes to the closet. If you need to stretch something, go and watch the stretch command that I sent in the announcement. I also put it in the um, dimensions playlist for the guest cottage so that if somebody went through their dimensioning of that and they had a problem, then you could right away, you could go and watch that video. I'm going to go to layout. Let's see, is that working? I don't see any changes. So there's a paper space. Line cut scale. I 
I think it's P S O T S. And it is on. So notice that this is still solid looking. I've got to do more than that. So I'm going to go back to model. It doesn't look like 10 is going to work for me. And the thing is that these are really small and they came out huge. Maybe I need to go smaller because if paper space line type scale is on, it may be scaling up by 24. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go down to 0.5. I'm just going to go the other direction. And this is something that I've not dealt with before. So I'm kind of punting here and I'm trying to, oh, look at that. So I went down to 0.5 and this worked. So I'm going to go down to 0.25 in this. And I'm glad that we went back and looked at that. So let me select all these again. Properties, 0.25. And then I'm going to go to layout. I've got breaks in this one. I don't have it in this one, but I have it in every one of these. Maybe this one needs to go to 0.125 because it's so short. So sometimes you have to select just one or another. And since paper space line type, I don't like that line type scale and paper space changing because I have to go back and forth. But it is what it is because someone set this up this way. I'm going to go down 50%. As I like to see the line types in here instead of going to layout to see what that does. So now I've got a break in every one and now I'm ready to go. So don't forget to have your note wall thickness four inches. That's going to be four inch tall text as well. Make sure all your title block and everything is filled in. You have all your dimensions, all your notes and all your um, all your blocks. So what you might do is just highlight over your input sheet to make sure that you have everything. I mean, it looks like, yeah, or count up things because you don't want to miss out on one thing or another. Your house will be built that way. So I'm going to go right here to plot. Save this sucker. Output, plot, Microsoft PDF, we're going to go to monochrome. So if I just hit right here, previous plot, it sets everything the same way. I'm going to preview it. And that looks pretty good to me. And then you're going to go ahead and save it to the same place that you have all the rest of your drawings. And this will be guest cottage. And if I've printed that before, it's going to ask me, do you want to override it? And I'm going to say yes, because now it's absolutely complete and ready for a grade. 